Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. Thou art worthy. Thou art worthy. Things for us, yes. but we've got to return it to him yes. by faith. Yes. 
by the confessions of our faith, by faith in our heart. God knows our heart. The Bible says, out of the abundance of Jesus, said this, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. And he, God said, my word will not return unto me void, but it will accomplish the thing I said it to do. Amen. It doesn't just bounce back like a Super Bowl. How many of y'all remember Super Bowl? Oh, yes. Yeah. They bounced high. But that's not how his word worked. He sent his word to heal us, to deliver us, to set us free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he's yeah. put it in the Bible for us. Yes. Amen. Yes. If you don't have a word from the Bible, you need to pray. Yes. God will give you a word. Yes. He's give you the Holy Ghost. That's Amen. right. To lead Thank you, Lord. to guide you, yes. to direct yes, you. Thank Hallelujah. You, Father. Thank you, Lord. Well, let's pray. And then we're going to read the word. Yes. Praise Thank God. You, Jesus. Father God, we just pray right now in the mighty Thank name of Jesus. Jesus. You Thank take you. this word, yes. anoint it to our ears. Yes. Father, give us yes. ears to hear, to eyes to see, and hearts yes. to understand. Yes. And I give you Lord. all the praise you, and all the glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes. Help me, Lord, to be able to deliver this word by your power and by your might, and that all will get clarity on this, Father. And I ask you right now in Jesus' name, turn with me to John, chapter 14, verse 1. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. John, chapter 14, verse 1. That's in the book of John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. In the New Testament. <laughs> okay. Hallelujah. We're going to start at the beginning. Before Acts. Before. It is the book before Acts, yes. <laughs> right after Luke. <laughs> Throw that in there, too. That works. <laughs> Which the book of Acts is right before Romans. So. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> now, this is Jesus speaking. So if you have a red letter edition, this will be in red. That's right. If you Amen. don't, it will be in black. Unless there's another color in your Bible. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is Jesus said, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Believe also in me. Hallelujah. Amen. Now that word in in this instance is a Greek word ice. It means and to believe is a Greek word, pistu. It means by faith or through faith, we enter into Jesus Christ. Yes. So it's a positional thing. Then we need to stay in Jesus Christ. We enter into Jesus Christ by faith. Romans chapter two, 5, verse 2, it says, By faith we enter into this grace wherein we stand. That grace is everything Jesus accomplished for us at Calvary. He paid for our sins. He who knew no sin became sin that we might become the righteousness of God through him. It's only through Jesus that you can live right. Yes. Paul said in Romans chapter 7, he said, Under the law, the things I couldn't do, the things I wanted to do, I just couldn't do. But the things I didn't want to do, I kept finding myself doing. At the end of the chapter, he said, Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? He was under the law. Yeah. Yeah. He said, Only through Jesus Christ. It goes on in chapter 8, he says, For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through our flesh, by God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful yeah. flesh and for sin, he condemned or put to death the power of sin yeah. in the flesh, that we can walk after the yeah. Spirit now and not after the flesh. Why? Because of what Jesus did for us. Right. Hallelujah. That's right. We yeah. enter into him yeah. by faith. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes. Yeah. And in my father's house, that's residence, are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Now that's an exciting hope. Because Jesus is preparing you a great place in heaven. Yes. Yes. And Jesus is coming soon. Yes. James right. says this life is like a vapor. It's here for a while and then it's gone. Yes. Yes. We need to make sure we live right for God. Yes. Wow, we're here because we're just here for a little while. Yes. And then it's over. Yes. They used to, before the flood, they used to live over 900 years. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. That's a long time. It is. The dinosaurs lived a long, long time, too, before the flood. Yeah. That's when the dinosaurs lived, before the flood. And some lived after the flood. You know, God talks to Job 
which is the oldest written book in the Bible, the book of Job. He talks to him about two dinosaurs. One of them sounds like what's legendary dragon. Sounds like that in Leviathan. He talks about the behemoth, which sounds exactly like an animal with a, a tail that like the size of a cedar, tree. a cedar tree. Some people think that was talking about an elephant. Have you ever seen an elephant's tail? Not that big. It's not a cedar tree. <laughs> That's a small cedar tree. <laughs> it's like that. He didn't say it until like a twig. <laughs> but that was the biggest animal that we know about now, but there was animals bigger than them. Yeah, that's right. Come on. There was an animal that had a long neck and a tail like a cedar tree. Yes. It was a dinosaur. And evidently, they lived at that time that Joe was alive. You know they found dinosaurs? That the DNA is intact? Wow. They've got blood in their body the DNA is in town. Well, guess what? DNA breaks down after a few thousand years. So they could be millions and millions and millions. They teach our kids that in school. That's right. That millions and millions, first thing they teach them in grade school, is millions and millions of years ago, dinosaurs roamed the earth. Yeah. Millions and millions of years ago. I don't think so. <laughs> Well, when did God create the dinosaurs? God told Job he created them on the sixth day when he created man. That's, That's right. right. That's what God right. told Job. It says that exactly. Must be true. God yeah. said it. Yes. That's right. Yeah. Well, but science says. Science so-called. That's right. The Bible says many have lost their faith because of science so-called. Don't lose your faith in God because a scientist tells you something. That's right. He's just wrong. That's he just hadn't caught up with God. That's right. Eventually, he will catch up. Yes. You see, for years and years and years, science didn't believe uh, that yeah. water gushed forth from the bowels of the earth. Like it says in the beginning, in the beginning, it's at the flood. It said the crust of the earth broke open and fountains of water flowed forth from the bowels of the earth. Yes. Well, now they found out just recently in the last few years, they found out that there's great water under the crust of the earth. Thank you, Lord. As much as on top of the earth. Wow. Have you ever seen like a picture of the earth from outer space? Yeah. It's almost all covered with water. Yeah. The teacher says 80%. <laughs> so it must be true. I mean, the earth is covered with water. But just imagine there's that much water under the earth. Man. Yes. They found that out now. They finally caught up with God. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> They eventually catch up. You know, we had things we read in science in, in high school, in grade school and high school. We had this science book, and it said at that time, it was like in the 50s, they caught a fish that had been extinct for millions of years, like two or three million years. And they were shocked. Yeah. <laughs> That's a, that fish lived a long, long time. Man, didn't smoke. What'd you say? <laughs> that fish lived a long, long time. Hallelujah. Well, the truth is, they never went extinct. Sorry. The truth is, God's word is true. That's right. Amen. We, God, the devil wants you to embrace the things that science says, like the Darwin. You know, Darwin, Darwin said in his book, The Origin of the Species, he said, when the fossil record becomes known, it will prove my might. It will link all species together. So you know what they're looking for? They're looking missing. for the missing links. Yes. Because there is no links between the species. That's right. <laughs> they're, look, they're looking for those links. If they could just find one, but they can't find any. Nope. Yeah. nope. Why? Because everything produces after its own time. That's right. right. That's right. Everything. God said that. So all the fossil record proves the word of God. <laughs> it proves it. My wife and I like to go to Florida. We go every. We haven't we've been for a while. Yeah, it's been a while. Not now. We've gone several. Well, we, yeah, it's not good right now because there's a hurricane going down there. <laughs> but we like to go down there. We find uh, sharks' teeth down around the Venice Beach area, wow. and we love doing that. And and so we were down one time, and and I had I had uh, I had worked all day getting a little thing full of sharks' teeth. Yes. 
all day. And then I thought, what? Well, before we left, I thought, I'm going to go out and just take one more swim. Mom was with us, wasn't you, Mom? One more swim out there in the ocean. So I went out in the ocean. I had those shark's teeth in my pocket, in my uh, swim trunks pocket. And I went out, and a big wave hit me. And when I got back to the shore, it was gone. Oh. A whole day's work. <laughs> And so then I told my wife, I said, we need, we need to find a place where we can go buy some shark's teeth. <laughs> so I asked around. I found out that there was actually a warehouse there that they, they sold out wholesale all over the world and stuff. And so I went in there. They had millions of shark's teeth in there. Wow. And I said, it took me all day to find this little thing full. And I said, where in the world do you get all these shark's teeth? And they said, well, a lot of people just bring them into us. I said, they find all these on the beach. She said, oh, no, they stay in their backyard. Wow. <laughs> I said, really? He said, yeah. He said, there's this layer of earth where all the shark's teeth are. Hello. Oh, wow. Hello. Uh -huh. And I said, really? He said, yeah, it's all over the world. <laughs> so you didn't have to go this place. layer of earth. He said, it's all so we had a rock with all these big shark's teeth that stick it in the rock. And I said, where did you guys get that? He said, that came out of Nebraska. Exactly. Wow. Wow. Sharks swim in Nebraska. <laughs> <laughs> How did sharks teeth get in a layer of earth all over the earth? There's something in the Bible called the Great Flood. That's right. Yes. Uh, yes. Covered the whole earth yes. and everything in the earth. Yes. And when that water settled, well, everything set, settled in different sedimentary layers. <laughs> there's, a, there's a guy who teach, teaches creationism by giving tours down the Grand Canyon, down wow. in the Colorado River through the wow. Grand Canyon. And see, all those layers of earth, yeah. that didn't happen over millions and millions and billions and billions. It happened after the flood. Yeah. Because God's word's true. Yeah. Amen. It happened after the flood. That Great Canyon was carved out in a short time after the flood. All that those waters receded and it set, all that sediment layers was put down. Layer after layer. Have you ever been to the Grand Canyon? Yeah. yeah. There's this little river. I mean, it's your way up, okay? There's this little, little bitty river down the bottom of that. They go that thing over millions and millions of years. It carved out the yeah, whole Grand Canyon. Exactly. <laughs> How many's ever heard of Mount St. Helens? Uh, it exploded during my lifetime. Yes, it did. It was a terrible thing. It was like they said it was like thousands of atomic bombs when that thing went off. And it devastated stuff all around. But after the after that, after that happened, there actually was they call it a little Grand King that formed after that. Amazing. In a short time. <laughs> it's like the Grand King only is smaller. How did that happen? It happened through just like the thing the Grand King happened. It all the erosion. It didn't take a long time. You know the, the sediment on, on the sides of rocks now. Uh -huh. Of that. Yep. They don't take long for rocks to form. And they talk about, they talk about, I've kind of gotten off here, but they talk about like the stalactites and the slagmites and everything. Yeah. Yeah. They say that took millions yeah. and millions of years. Guess what? I, was, I used to drive a semi-truck. I was down at a, a little storage place where I delivered uh, potato chips. And it was, the thing was just a few years old. And there's, there's this stalactite, I don't know if it's a, it grows up as stalactite or slagmite. Right. Right? Mike grows up. Mike, Mike grows up. So here's this stalagmite that's grown about this tall, about this big around, about that tall, off of the water that's dripped off the roof of this thing. Exactly. I thought, well, that didn't take millions and millions of years. <laughs> this thing has only been here for a few years. <laughs> so why do they make those stories up? They just make them up. They just make them up. Why? Because they've got to push up right. their theory. Right. They've got to voice their theory. Why? Because they can find no empirical evidence that it exists. But they are so against God. They hate God. So they're so against God that they have make up these stories to boost up evolution. That's right. And, and, the Bible, and you know, the Bible says science, falsely so-called, Bankrupts a lot of people's faith. Shipwrecks a lot of people's yeah. faith. Yes. He yeah. said many have lost their faith because of that. Yeah. We watched a, a movie put out by Ben Stein, and he's a Jewish guy. Yeah. But he, he challenged people on the evolution thing. It's about the evolution deal. And he went to them and he would say, he would say, Well, what evidence do you have for this? Well, 
Everybody knows that. It's kind of like the global warming thing. Everybody knows that all oh, yeah. reputable science believes that. <laughs> and so they found out that there wasn't really there wasn't really global warming. So now they don't call it global warming. Yeah. They call it climate change. Yeah. <laughs> Guess what? The climate does change. Yes, does. <laughs> the climate changes all the time. If you don't like the weather today, wait till tomorrow. Because right. it's likely to change. You see, climate change. Yes. It's all about a power grab. Yeah. <laughs> now we've got to tax you more. It's all about money. Yeah. yeah. Now we've got to tax you more so we can take care of all these different things. Yeah. We've got to control you. It's all about control. Hallelujah. Well, glory. I kind of got sidetracked there. <laughs> Praise your father. Uh, truth is good. Truth is good. Yes. Thank you, Lord. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. Jesus is coming soon. And receive you into myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And whether I go, you know. He's telling his disciples. And whether I go, you know. And the way... This word way literally means a highway. Literally means a path, a highway. And the way you know, Thomas said to him, Lord, we know not where you're going. And how can we know the way? How can we know the path, the, the highway to get there? And Jesus said to him, I am the way. Yes. The path, the highway. I am that path. I am the highway. Amen. And now, the is the one and only. That's right. The word the is the is one and only. Jesus is the one and only way. There's yes. no other name under heaven. Yes. There's no other power and authority yes. under heaven yes. by which a man may be delivered, yes. but by the name yes. of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Praise your God. Thank you, Lord. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. That by is a Greek word. The Greek word pass, and it literally means through. It literally means like through, go through a channel. You know, there's like a channel that connects, uh, there's like a channel of, like a tunnel that they built that connects uh, England to the, the con main continent of Europe. Yeah, it's like, what's that? It's called the channel. It's called the channel. Oh, it is. And so, I know that because this teacher just told me. And so, <laughs> so, but it goes, but there's no way to get from England unless you fly. There's no way to get, to, or take a boat. There's no way to get to, over to England unless you go through that channel. That's, that's like it is. There's no way to God without Jesus. That's exactly without going right. through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank, you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. There's no man cometh unto the Father but through me. If you had known me. You should have known my father also, for from henceforth you know him and have seen him. That's right. How have they seen him? Because they saw Jesus. Amen. And Jesus was in the Father, and the Father was in him. Amen. Thank you. And everything he did and everything he said, he was always being led by God, Amen. by That's God right. the Father. Amen. And Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it suffices thus. And Jesus said to him, Have I been so long with you? And you have not yet known me, Philip. Mm -hmm. And he hath seen me. He that hath seen me has seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father? Now this word, in, is a different Greek word. It literally means a location. A lo now he said, I am located in the Father. And the Father is located in me. Thank the you. words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. In other words, he's saying, these words I'm saying, they're not my words. He said, the Father's, these are the Father's words. That's right. But the Father that dwelleth, liveth in me, he doeth the works. Amen. Now, with Jesus, it's really not me that's doing these mighty works. Do you know you can't heal anybody? You have no power on your own to heal anybody. <laughs> but you, you have the authority to lay hands on the sick and see them recover. You have that authority. How do you have it? Because Jesus said so. He gave you that authority. You have the authority in the name of Jesus, by the character and authority of Jesus Christ, to cast out devils. Jesus said, I give you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the devil, which is miraculous power of the devil. 
And they shall by nothing shall by any means harm you. You see, we have an authority over all the powers of the devil. Well, does this devil have power? Sure he does. But guess what? Your authority trumps the power of the devil. That's right. right. Thank you, Lord. Greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. He is the God of this world, but we're not, we're not of this world. We're of the heavenly kingdom. And God, our God, he's greater than Satan and all that he has. Praise you, Father. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. In other words, Jesus was saying, what God is doing, he's proving to you by these signs and wonders right. Amen. that I'm really of him. Yeah. Yeah. Verily, verily, I say unto you, or truly, truly, he that believeth on me the works that I do shall he do also, and greater these mightier works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Now one time I was praying, or I was studying or praying, and the Lord spoke to me. He said, look that word up name. I said, well, God, I know what name is. My name's Mike. He said, look that word up name. So I did. You know what it said? Authority and character. Name is authority and character. In other words, Jesus said, whatever you do in my authority and character. You see, and we don't necessarily have authority for everything. Right. But when Jesus tells us to do a thing, we have authority yes, to do that. Right. And if we'll walk in his character, then we, we're in a position where we can do the works that Jesus yes, did. Yes, same Thank you, Lord. How can I do that? We can't do anything by ourselves. That's right. That's why we need the Lord. Amen. That's why we need Jesus. We can't do anything on our own. Friday, Friday I was out doing some Uber driving to make money for the church. And so, and I'll also minister to people. Ended up, it had been, I'd been out there for like five hours, and I'd made very little money for my goal. And I called my wife at 4 o'clock, and I said, well, I'm not going to be able to make it back tonight for the Bible study because I had not met, I met my goal. And I felt in my spirit that I still needed to, to be out there. And my goal was to make at least 100 bucks for the church that night. And so and I, my goal also was to minister to some people I hadn't got to minister to anybody yet. Yeah. And so, so I, I felt in my spirit that I should stay out a little bit longer. So I called Kathy at 4 o'clock, and I said, because uh, we do, we go to a Bible study on Friday nights. And I said, can you call them and tell, can you tell them that I'm not going to be able to make it back to the Bible study, but pray for me. Yes. And so about, I don't know what time the Bible study ended, but I picked up this lady at 9.15. And what time did the Bible study end? Oh, it ended probably 8.40, but we prayed for you at 7 something. Okay. Well, they prayed for me at 7 something. And anyhow, I picked up this woman at, at about 9.15 at night. It was the last, my last trip. And she got in, and it was only about it was only about a 10-minute ride. Mm -hmm. And so she got in, and at about three-quarters of the way through the deal, she said, because she was drunk and her husband was drunk, and they both said, I wish, I'm sorry that you have to miss out on this drinking. And I said, that's okay, I don't drink. I said, I'm a Christian, I don't drink. And she said, you don't drink? I said, no, I don't drink. And she said, that's kind of strange. I said, I said, I have never drank a beer in my whole life. And that's the truth. I've never drank a beer in my whole life. And she said, how is that possible? <laughs> so I can't believe that. How is that possible? And I said, the Lord helps me. And she said, do you have a phone number? I'd like to call you and talk to you about that. She said, I'm serious. I really would. And so I gave her my card. And I told her I'm a pastor too. Uh, and she said, I will call you. So we need to pray that she'll call me. Yeah. 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 Because, because then I will tell her how Jesus can deliver her from alcoholism. Yeah. You see, she was an alcoholic. She didn't understand that she could be free from that. Right. Yes. We can't do anything on our own. But we can do all things yes. through Christ who strengthens yes. us. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise you, Father. Yes. And within those next few hours, within those... I was home by 1030. Within those few hours, I made the $100 I wanted to be able to make to, to, get, to, get, to give to the church. Hallelujah. Well, glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. God is good. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord.
Whatsoever you shall ask in my name or character and authority, that will I do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it by his authority and in his character. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why we should live right for God. Yeah. We should live like Jesus. If we haven't been doing right, we should repent. That's right. yeah. We should turn away from our sin from our hearts. Jesus, Jesus. God knows our hearts. Thank you, Lord. God knows our hearts. People say all the time, well, God knows my heart while they're living evil. You know, God does know your heart. Yes. If you're living evil, Jesus said, by their fruits, you should know them. That's right. By their lifestyle, you should know them. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Well, glory. Hallelujah. If you love me, how many loves Jesus? Hallelujah. Amen. I love Jesus. How about you? Yes. Glory to God. <laughs> if you love me, keep my commandments. Amen. It says in 1 John, it says, how do we know that we love him if we keep his commandments? That's right. That's how we know that we love him. You see, keeping God's commandments <laughs> on our own, yeah. it would be impossible. That's right. That's right. But through Christ, nothing is impossible. That's right. That's Amen. Through God's help, nothing is impossible. In him. Amen. Thank this you, This one place, his disciples said, well, that's impossible. Well, she said, well, with, God, with man, that's impossible. But with God, nothing is impossible to him that believes. That's right. Nothing is impossible. If you believe the Word of God, if you'll stand on the Word of God, if you'll receive the Word of God, let God change you to be like He would have you to be. Amen. Learn to be led by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Trust in that. Amen. Trust in that inward witness of the Spirit. Yeah. Learn to trust that place. Yes. The place that says don't do that. Amen. Or do that. That's the place you listen to. Yes. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. And this spake of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus Amen. talked Lord. about that. Glory this spake of the Holy Spirit, which, you, which was yet to come, which those who do believe should receive. If we do believe in God, we should receive the Holy Ghost. Amen. Right. The world cannot receive the Holy Ghost. The world can receive Jesus. But once you receive Jesus, and in him dwelt the fullness of the Godhead body, then he will reconcile the Father God through Jesus Christ. Then we have access through the Holy Spirit's leading, guiding, and directing because in Him dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So when we are in Christ, and we have access to the Father. And Jesus said, in that day, you don't have to ask me for anything, but whatever you ask the Father in my name, He will do it for it, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. That's Hallelujah. right. Thank you. Glory to God. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray to the Father, and He shall give you another comforter, that He may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth in the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But you know him, for he dwelleth with you, and he shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come unto you yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But you see me, because I live, you shall live also. At that day you shall know that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, and I in you. This yes. is a positional thing. Yes, glory to God. And I in you. Thank you, Lord. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. Yes. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, you, he Lord. it is that loveth me. If you love God, you'll be keeping his commandments. Yes. Well, you can't do it on your own. Jesus said, you can do nothing without me. That's right. With him we can do all things. That's right, amen. With him we can do all things. Amen. Glory to God. He that loveth me and he that keepeth my commandments is he that loveth me and he that loveth me shall be loved of my father and I will love him and we will make our myself and we will manifest my and I will manifest myself to him. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus said to him, Lord not as scary, Lord, how is it that thou will manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said to him, If a man love me, he will keep my words and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. That means they will come and live inside of us. God the Father you, and Lord. Jesus Christ. Yes. You see, we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Don't you not? No, you're not. You yes. are the temple. Yes. Don't you not? No, you're not. You are the temple. Yes. We are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Yeah, come on. You don't have to go to church to be with God. You can. You are God's with you. God's in you. Yes. Church, yes. Jesus Christ. Glory to Father God. Father and the Son. Jesus reconciled us to Father. Amen. Amen. Thank Hallelujah. you, Lord. 
He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings. And the word which you hear is not mine. He said, this is not me speaking of myself. He said, but the Father, he sent me and gave me these words. He said, I only say that what I hear the Father say. I only do what God leads me to do. Amen. That's why Jesus prayed massive amounts of time. Yeah. If you read through the scriptures, you'll see Jesus prayed massive amounts of time. Before he appointed his apostles, he spent all night in prayer. Yes. All night in prayer before he appointed his apostles. Prayers. Yes, it is. Why? Because we get to get we get to hear from God. Amen. Thank Prayer you. Prayer is important. Thank you, Lord Jesus. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. Say all yes, things. Yes, all things. This word yes. is a Greek word. It's a Greek word past that's translated all things. It means every single thing. I've done things on my own before. One time I started a business that I knew how to start. But one thing I didn't know, I knew how to do a waterbed store. But I didn't know that suddenly people would quit buying waterbeds. <coughs> and so we started a waterbed store in Ozark, Missouri, and I didn't ask God. I knew how to build that, that waterbed store because I've had three up here in, in Kansas City area, and they were always successful. I never lost money doing any of them. Amen. I never had a month that I lost money in, in those businesses. I knew how to build a waterbed store. And so I thought I knew how to do that, but I never prayed about it. And so about a year later after we started it, everybody quit buying waterbeds all over the country, everywhere. Guess what? All the waterbed stores in the whole United States went out of business. That's right. I saw the writing on the wall as soon as everybody quit buying waterbeds. I thought, this is, this is done. So we ended, up, we ended up closing the waterbed store. Yes. And I called out to God. I said, God, why? He said, you never asked me about that in the first place. That's what he told me. And I said, well, you're right. I never did. I mean, I mean I, at least I'm admitted. I, I messed up. I should have asked God. Yes. I should have followed God. Hallelujah. It's important. Amen. God wants to lead us, guide yes, us in does. all parts of our life. That's right. We were out of town. We felt led to go down down south Missouri. I've got a, I've got a friend down there. He's a he's a preacher. He's a minister, and his name is uh, Titus Hartley, and he's got a wife Joanne Hartley. And I felt led to go down there. We we wanted to go to Silver Dollar City, and so I went down there to their house. He's got muscular dystrophy. He's just been diagnosed with that recently. But uh, he's going downhill from that. And, and we went down and we prayed with him and stuff. And, and his wife, that morning, had just broke her toe. So they were both hobbling around. He could hardly walk. And she could hardly walk because she had a broken toe. And so, so we got down there and we were able to minister to them. And then we went down to Wednesday when we went down to Silver Dollar City. And we actually met some people down to Silver Dollar City. We met uh, Judith's sister and her husband. Uh, Billy and Bonnie Dodge, and uh, and we were down there, and then we met some other people. We met a couple other couples. One of them was uh, a couple from uh, this with the PCG, a minister from the PCG, and yep. and uh, anyhow, uh, God hooked us up. Richard, with the huh? I was asking Richard Calhoun. Calhoun. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> anyhow, I didn't remember the names. So anyhow, uh, but God got us. Did you know? And we, we were able to like minister to them. And so, and and Bill, I, I told him this morning we were gonna pray for him because he's, he's got prostate cancer. Oh. So Bill told me he'd been diagnosed with prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. So let's lift up Bill yeah. for this. Bill the, God, God knows how to get rid of cancer, yes, folks. He does. Amen. He's a miracle working God. God yes, knows how to get rid yes. of cancer. Thank you, Lord. So let's lift Bill up to God yes. and heal his body. Father God, we just lift up Bill in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, take away this cancer, we pray, in Jesus' name. Father, eradicate it in, in him in the name of Jesus. And we give you all the praise, Father, all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you that you are the deliverer, that you are the healer. And we thank you that your healing virtue is flowing through him in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you glory and praise, Father, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We should always just follow God. We should always try to follow God. 
because God will lead us to good places. He will lead us and direct our paths. Yes. If we follow God, we'll get the job done. But it's not us that gets it done. It's He that gets it done. Yes. Amen. It's not me. It's Christ in me. Yes. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise your Father. Thank you, Lord. It's not us. It's Christ in us. Yes, Lord. We don't get the glory. Don't take the glory for what God's done. That's right. Just give Him the praise and glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank peace you. I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Do you have peace? Well, Jesus said He gave us peace. <laughs> glory. Come on. Thank That's, you, Lord. That's why the Word says don't worry about anything. But in everything, through prayer and petitions, with thanksgiving, let your request be known yes. unto God. Then the peace of God, yes. which passes all understanding, will be able yes. to keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. I got peace like a river. Yes. yes. Peace like a river. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank I got joy. Yes. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. We need to be saying, instead of worrying about stuff, we need to do what the Word says to do. Give God praise and glory. Yes. You want to be strong? Give God praise and glory. Amen. Give Him praise and glory. Don't lose your joy. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One time, I, I was having some problems with some things. I said, Lord, I'm so weak. I was praying. You know, prayer is good. Yes. We spend time, <laughs> yeah, and I spend time every morning in the Word. But I, that's good, too. We spend a lot of time in the morning in the Word. Hallelujah. Peace I leave it with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives it. You see, the world gives and then takes back. We call yeah. that being an Indian giver. <laughs> gives and then takes it back. God's not like that. My peace I give. Not like the world giveth. Give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. You see, fear is the enemy of faith. Fear will destroy your faith. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We need to keep our eyes fixed on the Word of God. Amen. Yes. We need to keep our eyes fixed on the promises of God. We need to be firm. If things are up, fine. If things are down, fine. Yes. We just need to be firm on the yes. Word. We yes. just need to be level and yes. stable. Yes. No matter what's happening, yes. if the good things are happening, that's great. If bad things are happening, that's great. That's right. We just need to have that's that kind right. of attitude. Thank yeah. you. We just really need to do that. We just need to be stable in the Lord and the power of His might. We need to keep our eyes fixed on Him and on His promises. We need to hold fast the professions of our faith without wavering, for He is faithful to promise. That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. This is Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Yeah. You've heard how it said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If you love me, you would rejoice. He said, you would rejoice if you really understood what was about That's right. to happen. That's right. He said, I'm yeah. getting ready to go away. He said, you shouldn't Glory. be rejoicing. Thank you. Lord. Because he was making a way for us to be redeemed and set free yeah. and made whole. After Jesus rose from the dead, the first thing he did, he went to his disciples, his apostles. And the Bible says that he breathed on them. That was his spirit. Yes. He was breathing in. The spirit of life he was breathing into them. That they could be born again. That they could be born of his spirit. Just like he breathed into Adam and Eve in the beginning. Yes. And God breathed into their nostrils the yes. breath of life. The spirit of life. Hallelujah. Yes. And, and man became a living soul. Our soul became alive unto God. Yes. And then when Adam and Eve chose to obey Satan instead of obeying God. All the authority in the earth that God had given unto man. They gave it to Satan yes. by obeying the devil instead of Jesus, instead of obeying God. You see, Jesus was the creator. John chapter 1, verse 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and all things were made by Him, and without Him was not made anything that was made. That's right. Jesus was the creator of the universe. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord. He said, I'm going away, but you should rejoice. Because I said, I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it comes to pass, that when it has come to pass, you might believe or have faith. Hereafter, I will not talk much with you. For the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me, but that the world may know that I love the Father. And as the Father hath gave me commandments, even so I do. No, he's, he said... He said, I'm getting ready to leave. 
And I'm just telling you ahead of time. But you know what? They didn't really get it. He told them over and over again that he was going to go. Yeah. He said that he's coming back. You see, he came back to life three days later. Yes. They finally got it after he came back and he appeared to some of them. But the first ones he appeared to, they didn't believe him. Even after he told them, he was coming back to life. Yeah. And he, he upbraided them. He could shoot them out for that, for not believing the ones that had saw him. You see, Jesus had told them that he was going to die, and after three days he'd rise again. He rose again, and he walked with them and appeared to certain ones of his apostles. Paul said that he appeared to over 500 people at one time. At one time. He had five, and he said most of those witnesses were still alive when Paul was writing that. That's Isn't right. that amazing? That's right. Isn't that amazing? It is. We're still alive. That's when people died like we do today, between 70 and 80 years on the average. Mm -hmm. We have promises of long life. Yes. Say this with me. With long life. With long life. I will be satisfied. I will be satisfied. With long life. Long he will satisfy me. Satisfied. And show me his salvation. Show me his salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can live a long life. I can live a long life. Yeah. 80 is not long. 80 is not long. 80 is just getting started. Yes. Moses, when Moses was alive, the average lifespan was, was between 70 and 80 years because he writes one of the Psalms, and in it he says 70 to 80 years. Yeah. But that's just average, folks. Yeah, that's right. Moses, God didn't even call him until he was 80 years old. That's right. He didn't even call him. And he th we think, he, he probably thought, it's time for me to retire. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <laughs> but he lived to be 120 years old. He lived 40 more years. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Praise you, Father. Yeah. As the Bible says, when he was 120, his natural strength never abated. Right. And his eyes never grew dim. That means he never got cataracts. Mm. The natural aging process is when you get old, you get cataracts. But he never got cataracts. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Praise you, Lord. Glory to God. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Well, glory. Thank you, Lord. That's my message. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. 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 Oh, glory, Father. We give you praise, Lord. You're a mighty God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Mighty God. Father, I pray you take this word and grant it deep within our, us, Father. Help us, Lord, to receive these things. Help us, Lord, to walk in these things. Help us, Lord, to be you who you'd have us to be. 